Well, Andre, are you nervous? Well, I have to say I'm really nervous. When I see how much was prepared, it's so much work. Yes, but I mean, we will just have a short contribution. We'll do a short welcome and introduction, and then we'll see what the team has prepared for us. Well, it's not for us, but it's for our visitors. And I mean, right, but um, the weather couldn't be better. It's perfect today. I've never seen it that beautiful. Uh, so far, there was a rain. Yes, people talk about the Westworld region, it's so green and lush because it rains so much. I haven't seen any statistics, but I think it's like that. Yes, I was really surprised by your book, um, Places of Happiness in the Westworld, whether this is the right place, we don't know. Well, we wanted to learn more about the Westworld region here as f a Renanians uh, ourselves, and in the next few months, we will certainly make some excursions. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to welcome you most cordially from the beautiful Westerwald region. We are here in the Niemack Company, based in Wissen, a very beautiful place. And this is the next series of our TV symposium. We would like to show you the most recent product. It's a very interesting site here with very interesting products. And I think you will be enthused by what we have to show you today. Thank you very much. I would also like to welcome you most cordially to the TV symposium of Tinkers. It is the seventh symposium which we have now organized as an online symposium. And it was nearly a year ago that we became involved in NIMAC here in Wissen in the Westerwald region. And this is why we said we want to transfer the symposium and broadcast live from Wissen. We want to transfer the Tunker symposium into a NIMAC symposium this time round. And, I mean, it was about a year ago that we pe became involved in the company. We have never regretted it, but quite on the contrary, we're very proud that Nimak is now part of the Tunkers group. And you will see, it's excellent what they uh, can show you here. Well, perfect joining technology is our slogan in Nimak. We have now adapted it. But it's now the perfect connection or the perfect title between the brands Tunkers and Nimak. And this is what you will also see here today. You will see a lot of Nimak technology with Tunkers ideas in the background. Or you will see Tunkers technology, Tunkers products with a Tunkers logo, but with Nimak ideas. So, and I hope you will realize that this is an added benefit because it's so important to understand that we have developed synergies, we have created so many new ideas by this new connection, this perfect connection between our two companies. So have a lot of fun, enjoy the symposium here today, and if you feel that this isn't enough, just come and see us here live. I would also like to welcome you to the 7th Tunkers TV Symposium. For the first time, we're broadcasting live from NIMAC in Wissen. We are here in the NIMAC Technology Center. It's very hot outside, sunny weather, and we hope that you feel comfortable in front of your screens. Today, we will hear interesting contributions about joining technologies such as welding, gluing, and clinching. And our first topic today is aluminium welding. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you. We're inside of a complete welding cell. This is where aluminium components are welded. We've got different joining technologies integrated into this cell. You can see a dosing unit here. We have different robotic handling system grippers. We have components such as rotating tables. But the hard piece of the system is here in my bag. It's a welding gun 
a welding gun with a magnetic drive, the NIMAC magnetic drive technology. Now, with this welding gun, we can have a high security process for aluminium welding and we can increase the service life of the caps. It has the added benefits that we have two force axes into the system which work independently of each other, which means we do not need an external compensation in the robot, but the gun will self-balance. And this is how we avoid a shift of the welding spot. So the shift and the distortion that you sometimes find doesn't happen here. And in particular with thin aluminium components, we have a very precise spot. In addition, there's benefits of the magnetic drive, such a continuous force rise, and the welding system offers you the possibility to have short impulses, KE impulses, which means that the aluminium, the metal, will be penetrated only very little. We have very low heat input, and this is why we have longer service life of the caps as well. The magnetic drive technology can be adapted to any type of system, not only for large special systems, but also for other products such as welding guns and serious products. And that way, this technology can be integrated into any cell with the same benefits, with the same drives, with the same controllers. And thus, it can be a completely integrated unit from the smallest system all the way to the largest scale system. Okay. In addition to welding, gluing and adhesive bonding is an established process, of course, in body shop uh, fabrication. We're in front of two systems here. Marco, can you tell us what it's all about? Yes, uh, warm welcome to all of you. As you can see, we can see two different dosing systems here. On the left-hand side is the classic single component dosing system. On the right-hand side, our new development, the smart dosing system. And I'd like to start by talking about the standard system. You have this standard pneumatically driven stand, uh, which means that you have a cylinder for the drive of the pump, left and right-hand side, the two cylinders for the follow-up plate lifting and um, the Increasing it. Then you have a material hose with the dosing unit as such. It is a heated hose, which means that the material can be adjusted to a certain temperature. We've got cold as well as warm systems, hot systems that we use. And the dosing unit is a 60 cubic dosing unit, so you have a 60 cubic maximum volume, which we can use in one single cycle. You have different sizes, the smaller size 20 cubic all the way to 300 cubic um, dosing units for larger volumes. Okay, before the symposium, we've made a video of this system, how it's used for gluing, and we can show you now. Now, the video shows you in three steps how the NIMAC Infinity logo is uh, put, applied onto the plate. The seam width is varied. This is a closer up. And you can see the next um, process here, and you can see it in the um, close-up now very nicely. The nozzle, you have a very broad seam first, the NIMAC logo, then a broad seam, and then a small, a very thin seam, and so on. It changes. And you can see in the transitions from the thinner to the larger seam, the smaller the transition is, the faster the dosing system will control it and changes or adapts to changes in parameters. Okay, in addition to the classic system, uh, we have a second system here, a new system. What are the main differences? Well, right, um, in the smart dosing system, as you can see here, we've only got one application head here. So there is no classic dosing and dosing chamber that needs to be filled first, but the application head is directly on top or ab ab above a material hose going to the pump. And this is also a new barrel pump. It's completely electrically driven. This is the big difference with the 
standard pneumatic systems. So we can use an electric motor for the pump proper, as well as a motor in the background for the follow-up plate motion. We can control the pressure and also readjust the pressure So in operation. So when we commission such a system, we can use the value for the HMI 150 bar, for example. The electric pump stand will then control this. The pressure will be put on the head here, and then with a smart dozing head, we can also adjust an opening angle. So we can change it during the actual process, and that is why we have the different seam widths. Well, we can see a clear size and uh, difference in size as well. And you've explained that the classic system is made up of three components, and the new system has two components only. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. This is the application head, smart dosing, and the pump stand. So the classic dosing unit no longer exists, which means at the beginning of a project in purchasing, you save the dosing unit. And you have to know that the dosing unit is quite expensive in a dosing system. You no longer need it. And that is why you no longer have cost for warehousing, spare parts, and also maintenance. Because as you can see, the dosing here and the, the other one, the structure, you have fewer interfaces, few components that may fail as well. So no pneumatic system on the right-hand side, exactly. No pneumatic system, no compressed air is needed for the barrel pump. So it's all electrically driven. Size difference, quite clear. What about the weight? Well, the weight. Um, in the small application head, you can see a maximum five kilos. So this application head can also be attached to smaller robots. In the most recent, or second to last uh, symposium, we saw that the smart dosing application head was attached to a 10 kilo robot, and we also applied seams. So. We, that is our customers, do not only save costs in purchasing, but also in the robot. So it goes through the whole chain, really. And of course, size, it's leaner, more flexible within a body shop. So it's downsizing, fewer components, more lightweight. And what about the price? Now, the price, of course, also a very important factor. With smart dosing, we have about 30% lower prices below the price of a classic system because the more expensive dosing unit is no longer needed. And thus, we can offer a very good product for many, many applications and solutions. Okay, these are the two systems in a one-to-one -one comparison. And we can now show you live how the smart dosing system works. So we put the seam on the paper here. Okay, let's, let, let me move back. So it's the same shape, same NIMAC logo with a frame around it with different widths of seams. And you can see the two results here next to each other. This is the direct comparison exactly. So you can see very identical seam, then this is the seam change, it's narrower than a broader part again, and this all without a classical dosing unit, but it's directly from the pump with a certain adjustable pressure um, value in the application head. Wonderful, thank you. Now, in addition to adhesive bonding and welding, there are other joining processes in body shop. And we will hear more now from Professor Reiskin from Aachen University Institute of Joining Technology in a video. Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you most cordially to the online TV symposium of Tunkas. NIMAC, the NIMAC company has asked me to talk about development trends in body shop. Body shop today is driven very much by lightweight construction and design. And we've got this in two aspects. On the one hand, we try to s use materials which are lightweight and absorb maximum forces. 
On the one hand, we've got aluminium uh, materials and high-strength st steel. On the other hand, we have a combination of metal and polymers. You have polymers in many places that are more lightweight than metals. Let me first briefly talk about metal, that is, aluminum and steel. With aluminum, we can say that resistant spot welding is undergoing a renaissance today. And this has to do with the following reasons. Plant manufacturers today can use excellent technologies with which the challenges that you normally had in joining aluminium materials can be mastered. One of these uh, manufacturers and uh, solution providers is NIMAC. Now, the trend is also driven by the fact that we have more and more new materials that are used. This is a component from aluminium investment casting, can also be welded with resistance welding processes, or another variant is high-strength aluminium alloys that are sometimes still a challenge because they have special metallurgical properties. But there's a lot of research going on, and I think very soon these problems will also be resolved. The second topic about multi-material construction and design is not so well known, maybe. Multi-material construction and design, steel and aluminium, is driven by the fact that you have mechanical joining or gluing adhesive bonding. Today, however, we can also create substance-to-substance -substance bonds, as you can see here based on this example. This is a demonstrator. It's part of a vehicle roof, which was soldered with an MSG short electric arc welding process. And of course, you're all experts. You know about intermetallic phases, which are challenged and so on. But these can be mastered. And today, these sophisticated processes can be used. The next topic I wanted to talk about today is metal and polymers. Today, this is also dominated by bonding, by adhesive bonding, but once again, we can also have substance-to-substance -substance bonds, and it's direct thermal joining processes. And we would like to show you a little video about this. You can see that the process is very quick. Basically, it's very much like resistance spot welding. But uh, we make a heat input into the material. The thermoplastic material will be molten, and then the two materials will be pressed, and we get a very firm bond between the metal and the polymer. The bond is at least as high strength as a glued joint or bond, but it's less cost, it's quicker, and in the end, you don't need an adhesive. Well, that is my conclusion for today. Thank you very much for listening. I would like to wish you a very interesting and exciting symposium today. Now, the perfect connection meets... Ingenuity in serious. Kai, what have you got today from the Technology Masters NIMAC? Well, after having looked at the multi-frame gam and anti-C gun in the most recent symposium, we have the first development stage of our new technology carrier, the NIMAC tube gun. It was the objective to have small compact base body, which can be used for C as well for X guns. And the special thing is that you have all important components of a mobile robot welding gun that can be integrated. The result of this development process is this monolithic base body, which only weighs 13 kilos which is the base for building up a C as well as an X gun. In this base body, we can integrate all components, such as the transformer, the spindle drive, or the guide for the C gun. But what is the benefit? What are the benefits? Well, it's certainly a weight benefit, weight savings, because as we can see here, the components such as transformers and spindle drives do not need an external casing. 
The cube, as such, is the casing for these components, which are directly integrated into the base body. And later, in practical operation, it has benefits with project planning, with maintenance and repairs, because a large unit of power cubes can be prepared, can be put in the warehouse, and then later on with the electronic arms for a C gun, or as we can see in the background, for an X gun, can be equipped. This, however, is only the first development stage of this technology project. We have other ideas, much, many more ideas, what we can integrate into this cube. And I think we will show this to you in one of our next symposiums. So please join us. Dear visitors, as the Managing Director of NIMAC GmbH, I would also like to welcome you on behalf of the whole team of NIMAC GmbH. Welcome to Wissen. In the next two to three minutes, I would like to talk a, l a little bit about projection welding. Together with Mr. Rötter, our Head of Development, I would like to talk about what we can do today in CD welding, uh, in, sorry, in uh, projection welding. Now, projection welding as such is a process that is widely used if we want to have these fasteners and put them onto sheet um, parts. It can be rivets, it can be bolts and nuts, but it can also be larger structures such as strut elements or other designs which can be put onto the sheet metal. As a long-established process is, you normally have MF welding, medium frequency, up to 80 kilo ampere currents. When it is about smaller to medium sized, components, or if it's about larger structures and fasteners, such as for the strut design, you have capacitor discharge welding. Both processes have their pros and cons. With this machine engineering, we can combine the, the benefits of the two processes. The classic capacitor discharge welding has the benefit that you have low input current, but you have a disadvantage that you have a very steep rise, a high peak welding current, which during the welding cannot be controlled. Quite in contrast, in MF welding, you have the benefits that you have a completely controlled process. During the whole welding, I can always control the current and I can really run welding profiles. Now, with this new performance technology, we've been able to combine the two benefits of the two processes in order to resolve very challenging problems. In order to show you what performance technology we've used, Mr. Rödders will now open the box for you, open the wire cabinet, and will show you the inverter technology. Mr. Rödder, could you open the cabinet for us, please? Okay, this is one of various converters that we use, and on top of that, we have the input converter supplying DC current. The converter for joining technology feeds uh, pulses up to 50 milliseconds, up to various seconds, and it's completely variable. It's also highly energy efficient, so the losses in the converter, but also in the other components of the system have been optimized and minimized. So in the transformer converter, but also in the secondary circuit of the system, it's been optimized. Another novelty of this system is that we have this transformer which is supplied with DC. And DC is the up-and-coming technology for industrial operations. We no longer work with three-phase AC, but we will have DC used in the future. And in this project, in this technology, we're already using this. Okay, and we can now have a look at the example of a welding process. Okay, in order to show you the most 
most important parameters of this machine. We can have welding currents completely controlled during uh, for all profile types up to 200 kilo amperes. In, on top of that, we have magnetic drive technology used here, which is a highly dynamic actuator on a magnetic base, which means that during the actual welding, the welding force that we need for the repositioning of projection welding can be controlled at any time and adjusted. And based on these control parameters, welding force and welding current that are completely controllable, we can use very challenging tasks. One of the current tasks that we've been confronted with most recently from electric mobility is the connection between copper parts and aluminium parts. And if you know a little about metallurgy, you know that both materials are highly electrically conductive and also very heat, very good heat conductors. So inputting the process energy during the welding is a very challenging task. Now with this system, we have been able to keep the welding energy in the welding spot based on the process control with the two parameters, force and current. Mr. Redder, can you show us the welding process, please? Unfortunately, it's not very spectacular, but uh, nevertheless, I wanted to show you that we've got a very firm welding bond between the aluminium and the copper part. Development partners of Bochum University, Faculty of Material Sciences, who have co-developed and co-studied this with us, they have shown in high-performance vibration testing that the connection between aluminium and copper and the intermetallic phases that you normally have that make the material brittle have been more or less avoided by this process technology. So that we have evidence that with good process technology and engineering, you can also do projection welding with these sophisticated tasks. Well, Dear uh, visitors, I would like to uh, welcome you here in person. Come and see us. Uh, Mr. Rudder and his team, our engineers, are always looking forward to customers coming to us here into the technology process with their challenging task. And I think we're very well prepared for resolving these tasks for you. Thank you very much. And then we can come to the next topic with a new machine configuration for projection welding again. Okay. Okay, let's turn to the new C-frame nut welding machine with NIMAC nut feeding and NIMAC nut monitoring. And I would like to hand over to Mr. Seeberger. Thank you. Projection welding was already explained by Dr. Hammer. But uh, I would like to show you a projection welding machine and its components. As you can see, you have a C-frame projection welding machine which is the product from components of Tunkers Engineering, the modular kit from forming technology, as well as welding and bonding technology from NIMAC. The result is a very clean and lean design. It's highly accessible for all main components, and it's highly adaptable to our customer requirements and customer applications in the field. Furthermore, naturally, we have, of course, focused on cost and performance data and parameters, and we have been using them in an optimal way. We've got the following assemblies here. We've got the MF uh, welding transformer, a NIMAC product with a short distance, provides a welding current to the electrode. We've got the Tunkers multi-force cylinder, which allows us to have high welding forces with very low air consumption. Furthermore, we have a pneumatic unit, which has now reached performance level D cooling water distribution with the individual cooling circuits in separate control as well as a flow through measurement. Furthermore, NIMAC feeding unit and last but not least, the Tunkers C-frame from the um, reforming technology modular kit. 
Now, on the process, each welding process in nut welding starts with the feeding of the nut. The automatic feeding unit, which is a NEMAC product, is now used. The nut is put into a rotation feeder, is put into the right position. Then we have a compressed air system, which goes right into the nut bracket and then is fed into the system. This feeding, however, can be a problem outside in the field in operations. As we know, there's no such thing as a 100% solution. And for this case, we have the lower electrode with a monitoring system where we have different features that we can monitor, such as no nut, no sheet metal, or not in a wrong position. And I'll show this to you now. In the first case, we simulate the component with these blanks, and I want to now simulate that there is no nut in the feeder. You can see that the system has detected that the overall height is not in line with the default value. This is why the process is interrupted. So you don't have an erroneous welding and the failure rate also goes down. The second uh, possibility is that you do have a nut, but maybe the handling robot lost the component on its way to the machine. Once again, it's being detected that the component is missing, the process is interrupted, and an operator must look at the system and must do some troubleshooting. And as the final possibility, we have this here. The nut is put on its head in the wrong position, once again, the system detects it and thus sends a warning, an error message to the controller. Right, and now I would like to show you a well-functioning process in its completeness. Okay, what uh, made I... Uh, what mistake made I made? Okay, uh, the sheet metal is not there, so open the system, please. I must correct this. Okay, let's try again. And you can see it's really an, an, uh, a, a functioning system. This is the complete process now, the real life process. Another feature that we've got is that we have the bottommost electrode with a retractable pin, which is PLC controlled and can be retracted at the end of the process. The benefit is that when we have welding spatter, for example, or other contamination, the pin will be glued to the component. The pin is not destroyed when you retract the system. So if the pin is locked and the retract position is not reached, the system will go to fault again, alarm message, alarm error message, and the operator must go and have a look. Of course, this is very decisive for the cost of the system because we can maintain the pins. Now, the perfect connection, perfect joining, this is another um, slogan for us between NIMAC and TUMPAS, the perfect connection feeding technology by NIMAC, which is used with us for nut punching. Now, nut punching is something that we have been doing for a long time, and the basic principle is really simple. The nut is prepositioned by compressed air, as we can hear this, and the slide, the guide, will preposition the nut below the punch. In this position, I can then have a firm bond between the sheet metal and the nut. And we use an electric drive, six tons on a C-frame, and when we now punch through it, you can see it's a perfect connection. The nut is perfectly integrated into the sheet metal, into the panel, and can no longer be 
moved and can be used accordingly. As in every symposium, we also have a short look at classic cars. This time, our colleagues went to the Hackenburg Cadillac Museum. Hackenburg is a small town in the Westerwald region with a very nice old town, a castle, and it's home to the famous Hackenburg Brewery. Today, we're in Hackenburg, the beautiful town which is not very far away from the Nimak company and very fitting with the 120-year Cadillac um, anniversary next year, we're visiting the Cadillac Museum which is based here in Hackenburg. Mr. Miller, hello, and thank you very much for inviting us to your sacred halls here. How long has the museum been existing? Well, we have the collection started in 83, and then in 86, I think, it was turned into a museum. Well, that was the, the largest collection probably in Europe. Yes, it was the largest collection in Europe. How did you find the Cadillac brand? Well, it was not very well represented in Germany. There were very few who looked after that as a student. I went over there and I thought, okay, I can maybe buy one or two. Then together with friends, we bought six Cadillacs. We put them in the paper and they were immediately sold. So we said, okay, we'll go again. And then it, how, this is how it all developed further. What's this? This is a great car from a customer in the UK who wanted to have the car as originally as possible, so it doesn't look restored. In the meantime, uh, we find that original vintage cars are much more expensive than restored cars. So the classic barn finds no longer exist, do they? Not even in the USA? I mean, uh, yes, sometimes we do find these things in a barn. Okay, do you also repair the cars directly here in a workshop? Well, we do smaller repairs. But I'll invite you to have a look at our next stop, the classic motor culture company, the workshop, where they repair cars. Okay, I'll gladly come with you. Let's have a look at the workshop. Okay, now we're here in classic motor culture in the workshop and they all repair the classic Cadillacs. What's this model here? Well, they're one of the um, last old Cadillacs with the frame here and after the downsized engines, they have been upped a little bit. What? Uh, how much fuel do they take? Well, less than a comparable German car. Well, and finally, we can see a few welding spots here. I mean, Nimak is the epitome of welding, the perfect connection. I mean, when I look at this, well, it's not really Nimak quality. There's some room for improvement. Standard of the world. I mean, something that we see as the perfect connection. It's also reference quality that is used by Cadillac. And then, Mr. Miller, I saw something here. I mean, I've never seen this before. The car doesn't seem to be a Cadillac. It seemed to be a Louis Vuitton car from Paris. Well, it's actually a fabric coating also for the seats. There are very few cars that are equipped with a Louis Vuitton fabric. I mean, this was a dealer of handbags in Luxembourg who wanted this car. Okay, so it's not from the fake market in Beijing. It's nearly a unique car. Yes, I don't know of any car like that, and I haven't found it in Google or on the Internet as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting us to your workshop today and uh, thank you very much for showing us the Cadillac Museum in Hackenberg. So enjoy car tinkering and uh, happy welding as we say in Nimak and Tünkers. Thank you. In the past symposiums we have already talked about several drive systems for C frames. Today, we've talked very much about joining processes in order to show you what is happening in the NIMAC world. We've got the C-frame here with 
um, nut punching, and this is an application for clinching, all driven with a six-ton electro servo drive with a driven nut or a driven spindle. The six tons are needed in order to make the required connection, the bond. The bond here with clinching requires about this tonnage in order to have a safe and firm bond. Basically, the C frames that we supply are uh, designed using FEM analysis, optimizing the process, first of all for the bending, but also for weight, for robot applications, but also for stationary applications if you require higher stiffnesses. The C frames are normally usually supplied with a process control. The process control or monitoring is normally designed in such a way that you use it with the current or also um, other forces and you have a tool set, a die and tool set that uh, we will see later. But let's first do a, a joining process now. As you can see, not very noisy, relatively unspectacular, but a very firm bond, nearly, maybe even a perfect connection. The tool and die sets are usually bought by Tunkers at BTM. The BTM company in the past few decades as of the 90s, has cooperated with us. Now, why should we reinvent the wheel if BTM has so much experience and expertise? And they're really the experts. And I would now like to turn it over to Mr. Fish, who is going to talk about the tool and die systems of the Fish, of the BTM company. Thank you very much, Mr. Heyer, for this introduction and for showing us the process. Clinching is a mechanical joining system for connecting sheet metals, tubes, and panels. It's a cold joining process. As a pioneer, BTM has been using it for over 40 years now. I am Hans Werner Fisch, I'm Managing Director of BTM Europe, and together with my colleague Mr. Finkenbeiner, I would like to welcome you to this symposium. Together, we will show you the benefits of this clinching technology based on the tools and dies and our applications. As early as in the 80s, clinching was used. You can see this with this decorative panel with a three-part point or spot. We have long-standing experience and thus we can offer you the most diverse applications. And this is how we also support the Tunkas company, starting with simple tools and dies, handheld tongs, uh, but also all the way to automatic systems. And Mr. Finkenbeiner is now going to continue. Yes, I would also like to welcome you, Muscoli, to the symposium. The application possibilities of clinching technologies are varied and very diverse. Wherever you have two or or even more than two layers of sheet metal that need to be joined and connected, you can use clinching technology. What's important is that at least one of the joint partners must be formable and shapeable. The clinching technology has been integrated into many areas. Of course, in automotive industry, engineering, in whiteware, but also such as laundry machines and cooker hoods, but also in building facility and management. You use a lot of clinching there. And there are other applications in other areas such as furniture and shelf manufacturing. And next, we would like to show you a few of our examples. Well, the most well-known are the round um, talk lock systems. You can have a firm die or a flexible die, a talk lock. And we've uh, brought you a little video about this. You can see how the punch presses the material down into the die. It'll be broadened and wind the lamella will open and you have a lateral back cut in a circular design. So we can have 
the same factors in all directions. This is a step design which shows you the connection in the fabrication and in parallel the simulation on the right hand side. You can also see that the simulation actually reflects the actual spot fabrication. This was the video. We would now like to show you some components. Benefits of clinching is also that surface coating, for example, completely exists, it's maintained, so you have anti-corrosion protection. For whiteware, for example, clinching has been used for over 20 years because also it has very high dynamic strength and can absorb vibrations. And the resin or the paint layer is completely maintained. Let's go to car manufacturing. We have components here. This is a crash-relevant component with a German sports car OEM with 48 clinch points simultaneously in a press system. Clinching means that you have many, many spots at the same time. What we can do here in aluminium, we can also do in steel. This is a sliding roof frame, also by an OEM, and you have 58 clinching points here, and these are also made simultaneously. In addition to these larger components, there are smaller parts, also more filigree and delicate parts. This is a decorative trim, which is used in sports cars, and these spots are made by a robot tongue. Mr. Finkenbeiner will now show you three of our systems um, in this cooker hood. Well, yes, very briefly, this component is an example of how three different clinching systems by BTM can be combined. Just an example of a casing. On the one hand, we've got a variety of Toklock points here and joints in order to achieve a high strength. Furthermore, we have lens log rectangular systems that we used so we can separate the material layers. They actually cut through and the cutting through means that we have a mechanical interlock of the components. So also for painted sheet metals, the earthing becomes possible. And as the third example in this casing here as well, we have the oval lock, this oval joint here in these corners in addition to have a torsion uh, free system, a system that is protected from torsion. And Hans Werner Fisch will now talk about the oval lock. The oval lock is the symbiosis, if you like, from the torsion proof lancet and the non cutting round uh, lock or tock lock. The market wanted to have a non cutting process. And this is a wonderful example from electric mobility. With one point, you can achieve a very high strength, and in addition, you have a torsion proof system. But the earthing point, which my colleague Mr. Finkenbeiner mentioned, is also very important in electric mobility. For example, in this power bridge, you can see a, po a torsion proof point which was actually used as a lance lock. The oval lock really replaces two tock locks which were used in the past. Today, now, we're the only manufacturer who can have torsion proof. Uh, talk lock points. If we have a narrower system, we can also use a fixed die, and you can see this here. And this is really also the conclusion of our contribution. Yes, and um, we hope that we were able to show you some examples of our applications of BTM clinching systems, and we would like to thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you. And then I'd like to turn it over a dynamic and a fixed connection of the spots and the points as well as our partnership with Tunkers. Thank you very much, Mr. Fisch. Today, we're going to talk another novelty, which is the NIMAC gun configurator, which simplifies project management in many, many ways.
I am very pleased to be able to talk about the new use of friendly uh, gun configurators for welding guns of NIMAC. Thanks to the sophisticated design of the configurator, you can very quickly and very simple steps configure your guns, your welding guns, in an individual way. After the configuration, the right 3D model is available to you in a step format. You no longer need to have inquiries for new models. You no longer have to generate new data. All models are available online at any time. This is means that you save costs and time. Now I'd like to show you the new NIMAC tool on the NIMAC website based on an example. So you go to the NIMAC homepage and click on Zangenkonfigurator, Gun Configurator. The Gun Configurator now gives you a selection of a manual gun or a robot gun. Let's take the robot gun. And then there's a proposal. Is it for steel, for aluminum, and so on? We then select whether it's an X or a C gun. The next button is for the gun family. And for this example, we now select the multi-frame gun. And then in step two, the first selection has been made and you can select the throat depth and you will then already see that there is a default, a kind of pre-selection that has already been made. You can also check other details and input other details by using the fixed arm or the movable arm and use the values and the selection of the gun will then be reduced to your parameters. As you can see, the program has now selected a welding gun for you in line with your um, the values that you've selected. And the next step is a summary of the technical facts and figures, the robot welding gun. And finally, you have the position of the fixing of the welding gun. You must then click on the picture and decide about the position. And we now decide for the lateral connection, the P5U, and you can see that in the next step, you have the complete gun shown to you. The gun is now completely configured. You can then input your contact details, and then you will receive a download link from us. Thank you very much for your interest. We're looking forward to receiving you and seeing you on the NIMAC website. And we're always available for your questions. And the final product of the symposium today is the Tunkas form and piercing tongs. As we already know, it's two processes in one single system. It is forming and piercing. Christian, where are these tongs used? Well, a form and piercing tong normally is used to use some tolerances from body shop. You may remember how this worked in the past when we had discussions about the gap here in the doors that should be closed. Normally, the uh, bottom part had, had a certain size, it had tolerances. And the hat, of course, also had tolerances. The, so the lower part had to be as precise as possible. And for doing this, form and pierce tongs were used. Now, basically, we use the embossing process and the punching process in order to achieve a good connection. Normally, in the robots, the tolerance position of the body is measured with a laser system. Correction values will be transmitted to the tong, and the tong will then adjust the embossing depth. The embossing depth will then be transmitted into the component, which is on the body, which is waiting for the embossing, compensating the tolerances, and after the embossing process, once again, there's a measurement in order to adjust the right tolerance. Today, we would like to show you this process with a 1 millimeter and a 3 millimeter embossing. And we're starting with 1 millimeter depth. 
Man kann jetzt hören, wie der Stell der Stellzylinder elektrisch and verfährt. And you can see how the positioning um, cylinder is moved. Einheit A, an electrohydraulic unit then will do the embossing at 30 tons. You can hardly see it in the sheet metal, so one mil millimeter may not be enough. Now let's do the three millimeter process. First of all, the adjustment, run. Fantastic. Great. Now, um, in the meantime, the sheet metal was measured. It was repositioned and re-embossed because the tolerance taloran had not been reached. This is an integrated feature in this tong. So we can directly see whether the embossing depth is correct. If not, we'll reposition and rework. Of course, the time delay is a little confusing, maybe. But as we've said, this is about high precision. And my body in the car should work in perfect conditions later on. Okay, so much for the tongs. Okay, and this brings us to the end of today's symposium. I hope you liked it. I hope it was interesting for you. In case there are any more questions or if you're interested in products, you can always reach us. The contact details of our company can be found on the Internet site. Have a very nice summer, stay healthy, and join us for the next symposium, please. Thank you very much. See you.